Listen. So far, this is the eighth movie in the DCEU, and you'll probably have a better chance finding a consistent title for this movie than figuring out which DC films are or aren't connected. We got Robert as a new Batman, which I'm pretty excited for. I think they're restarting Suicide Squad. This one marks the first rated R DCEU film in theaters, and it's even produced by Margot's own company. No, I first uh, started pitching the idea when we were still shooting Suicide Squad the first time. Four and a half years ago when I pitched a R-rated girl gang action film with DC characters, that was a bit of an uphill battle. And, <laughs> um, and now, you know, it took a couple years to convince everyone, like, I think this is a good idea. And I think it delivered, even if WB kind of botched it. Let me explain. So there's no doubt that Harley was a standout of Suicide Squad. You know, nobody was dressing up like Deadshot for Halloween. So when Margot realized that the studio would definitely reprise her role, she wanted to be in control. I, I don't, but I also don't want her. I don't want the character put in a situation that doesn't really behoove her. Come on, let's go. It's crazy to think that she pitched a fourth wall breaking rated R superhero film before 2016. And the studio was all like, that'll never work you know, until it worked. That just makes these fools look like they were the ones hopping on the trend. I also remember when DC was so adamant on everything not being rated R so that they could sell more tickets and they never swore in movies before. But now, but now their characters do, so it just makes it seem inconsistent. It's just funny seeing the studio be so anal about things while they're throwing darts at a board hoping something sticks. So I'm glad that someone like Margot took the lead. Because in Suicide Squad, there was a lot of things I couldn't actually do and say because there, there are limitations when it comes to a, in a rating. So yeah. we didn't want to have those limitations. You're not even allowed to show wet blood. Do you know how hard it is to have a realistic fight scene when like you punch someone in the face, but they can't like have flowing blood? Sure, it still has the playlist feel that Suicide Squad had. Sometimes it feels like a Tumblr girl's TikTok, but I'll take Megan the Stallion rapping over a breakup over Jared Leto's Joker standing alongside Rick Ross talking about a purple lamp. On top of it, the direction actually suits the character. It's paced like a comic. It feels like you're going through panels. They even hit you with that meanwhile to replicate the comic-like non-linear storytelling as opposed to what Suicide Squad did, which was um, focus on other things. Robbie was a big fan of the Charlie's Angels movies from back in the day, even basing the villain Black Mask off Rockwell's baddie in that one. And I think I like this one because it feels like a group of pissed off women banding together to kick ass and not celebrities like trying to defeat Thanos by singing Imagine. So instead of busting out the sex appeal, they busted ankles. But I thought it would, yeah, just give us more freedom with the violence, with the fight scenes, um, and with the language, because these characters aren't goody two-shoes, and it do it actually doesn't feel truthful to, to put a muzzle on Harley. Mm. So believe me when I say that her fight against censorship does not go unnoticed. Because I'm Harley freaking Quinn. She's Harley freaking Quinn in the ads, but she's Harley. Gwen in the movie. That said, big spoilers for the movie if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. They even released it early so that you can catch it in the comfort of your own home, which is really cool considering that, you know, for others, we've left the house several, several times. And the one time they can come to us, for whatever reason, they don't. The story of Harley Quinzel begins with a cute little animation talking about her backstory and how she was raised at a nunnery, but it does fast forward to the events after Suicide Squad, when Joker and Harley break up. It was the closure I needed. A fresh start. A chance to be my own woman. I love how they didn't even bother to bring back Jared Leto because uh, he was busy raising a cult, but the only thing Harley is worshipping is Batman. What a way to start my new life. <sighs> with the perfect egg sandwich. Oh, look, I completely agree. I, I, eat bre I eat breakfast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So believe me when I say this hurt more than this. Ah! You broke my fucking leg! While you could argue that Harley's biggest obstacle is herself, I do think that having Roman Sionis, uh, yeah, like ripping people's faces off, does make him a valid threat in the film. He was born into a crime family who didn't give a crap about him, so he becomes a crime lord whose main form of rent is attention. <laughs> Get on that fucking thing. He's pretty zany with all of his Run the Jewel-like statues in his clubs. There are moments where I thought Owen was going to break out in his Moulin Rouge outfit. You get so used to him being really goofy, and then he goes crazy. Is that a snot bubble? Ew, gross. 
Oh, I've changed my mind. Peel it off. Chris Messina also killed it as Victor Zaz. Like, I highly recommend the character's story arc from Shadow of the Bat, but this man brought him to life. He really leaned into the physical transformation too. Um, he literally had to dye his hair every two weeks in order to keep the platinum blonde. Um, so I think his hair probably just fell out at the end of the at the end of the shoot. <laughs> I'm, and I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> for this film, Roman plays a bigger role over Harley now that Joker's gone because his protection was the only thing stopping every other guy who had a problem with Harvey and. I mean every other guy from coming at her, and now that she's under Roman, she has to do all of his bidding and find a diamond as she clashes with having to choose business over loyalty. Doc, it's me. It's just business. But it seems Owen knows how to do both. Ooh, I love it. Montoya is a detective in Gotham whose partner took all the credit for a case and became chief, while her partner partner is the DA and just undermines her all the time, and while all of the characters are going through a form of emancipation, Montoya's the only one who isn't a villain, like she's doing this legally and still got duped. I underestimated you, and I'm sorry. I'm used to it. Dina Lance, aka Black Canary, suppresses her superpowers ever since her mother used hers to fight crime, and it didn't go well, so to play it safe, she just joins them. Journey Smollett based the posture of her character off the Injustice video game, but she actually based the morals of her character off the Justice system. The film is yeah. peppered with that sort of everyday misogyny that women have to put up with from us, and it's a good message to put out there to remind guys that, that that's, those days are over, you know? Those days are over, no doubt. But or you play Obi-Wan? Cassandra Kane is an up-and-coming thief who aspires to be like Harley. And that was funny how she, she like wants to base her small independent business of theft around her idol. Sadly, she decided to deposit a diamond into herself. So now Harley really has to decide between business and loyalty as she discovers that the Joker's notorious reach doesn't even span as far as she thought. The Joker? You never heard of him. Oh, sounds like a dick. <laughs> That said, Joker still won an Academy Award, so he really ain't going nowhere. The final person we meet is Helena Bertinelli, who goes by... It's Huntress. Her family got shot up by another gang, but was graciously spared by one of the assassins, was then raised by said assassins, only for her to become an archer. Who's Deathly Arrow's maker and assassin? She starts going down her kill list before teaming up with the Birds of Prey to get the final target that they're all after. <laughs> I love that they just blow him up. I just found that so funny in the movie. I also loved the Scott Pilgrimage vibe she was able to bring back here. Again, all thanks to the style of editing. And her choreography is so much better than what they did in Gemini, man. Like, all those extra frames for what, Aang? Thanks to Kathy's decision to go for longer takes and not do the um, obsessive cutting that studios like to do, I actually like the action. The majority of the stunts uh, were practical and done by our actors, actually, and they trained for uh, months and months with 8711, uh, the stunt company mm -hmm. that we worked with, um, who, who were responsible for like John Wick, um, and I think it really helped them form their character in a way. Margot's brother is a stuntman, so, you know, must run in the family. The cast and their stunt team were out there they're doing more flips than a Palpatine. They're fighting with their hair ties, fighting on the heathen set. There's a shootout in the evidence room that causes it to start raining cocaine. And Harley snorted it for a boost like it was Popeye's spinach. And I just love this shot right here with hundreds going down the slide. Because the cameraman was really there and got bopped at the end. The theme for sure in the film is emancipation. And everyone, like you said, is being emancipated from either a system, in Rosie's case, a person, in Harley's case, with the Joker. And honestly, with Black Canary, it's a combination of a few things, but honestly, what I honed in more so um, was this idea of her being emancipated from a state of mind. Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. While I don't think it's perfect, and I do think they botched the marketing for it, I do like that they released it out for everyone to see at home. I love the action, I love the theming of reinventing yourself, and realizing at the end of the day that there's only one relationship that will never let you get. Breakfast. So many egg sandwiches. I mean, oh, wait, so on. many egg, duck sa egg sandwiches. Duck egg sandwiches. I am, there was duck that was, I am allergic that to is. chicken egg whites. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, again, Margot's really invested in this character. Like, it, it's really close to her soul. 
literally. I mean, on the first Suicide Squad, we did squad tattoos. I mean, mine's on my foot right here. I also love all the other Easter eggs, like swapping her tattoos from pudding to pudding cups. Jay turns into mermaid. Uh, she believes in Medicare for all. I also even like the, 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 the old school ones, because for those of you who didn't know, uh, she's actually not based off the comics, but the animated series. And in the beginning, her dad trades a beer uh, for her. And the beer is actually named after Paul Dini, the guy who created the stuff. Her roller derby number is a reference to the year that the you know she premiered in the animated series so it's pretty dope uh, and there's also another animated series out that's like really rated r i love their promo for it because they were like you guys know that we cover a lot of movies and like it's it's promo but people hate it this was like a perfect thing that pretty much said show and spoil everything you want we know what promo is so i like the ideology from the people who uh work on a character like Harley Quinn. I will say that. I know a lot of people are still wondering how it's gonna connect, and out of all the interview research that we did, she's really good with her words. I still don't think it is, but this is what she commented on it. Does this kind of continue with, with James Gunn and what he's telling you to do on the Suicide Squad? Yeah, no, exactly. Again, you get to see another side of Harley, and it's it's kind of interesting. You keep getting to meet her at different points in her life as if a couple of years have gone by. Of course, films aren't directly connected, but as an actor, I can map it out in a chronological sense, so. Very vague, but you know, we'll see. Okay. Just to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll send you a breakfast sandwich.